Morning. Good morning, folks. Beautiful worship. Praise and worship. Amen. It was a great, great, great time uh, when Pastor Shaw was coming with all the other pastors that come, that came and hope that, that you were able to see it online or, or it's, it's still available. That, that's there. And it just gives it a taste of the love of God and the, the depth of his word. And it was really amazing to, to, to be around the body of Christ and, and hear from Pastor Shaw and Pastor Cannon, Pastor Keith, just to the body of, around the body of Christ, Pastor Jeff and, and all those that uh, were here. Pastor Brooke, uh, Brookie. Brookie, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, it was just really, really, really full and dynamic and uh, powerful and lovely to be here. And uh, it, it, it's all, it's all entwined. It's all. Pastor, Pastor said the uh, simple means material. Material. Uh, we're all the same cloth. We're a tapestry woven together. We're, we're in Christ, uh, the body of Christ, unique but special um, because of what the Lord has done. And Pastor Ken had given a message last week. It was uh, you know, the inspired word of God, all scriptures inspired. And Pastor Schaller spoke on the same same subject, uh, the, the the inspiration of word. It's the translation. It was just, a, just how the body comes together. When you're at the feet of Christ, he speaks to the, the leaders, the teachers, and, and he gives us to, to us to impart unto you, to to be uh, to given a, a special a message from the Lord to us, special, and it's the doctrine. It's 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 uh, it's just humbling to 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 hear the word of God given to the body of Christ. How it how it speaks to our hearts. Um, it, it's it's a. It's just beautiful, and. Uh, how Pastor Schaller last night spoke about how love passes knowledge, and how he, how he could do how he could die for for mankind. You think about that how how it could happen, but love passes my thinking, it passes understanding, it passes. It's it's his work. It's he finished that work that no man could do because of love. And it's the love that we're come to know more of this morning through faith. Because I can't understand it. We all can't understand it. We may think we can understand it. And we can grab a hold of it. But it's so much deeper than that. His word is deep. It takes us to places that uh, we're here this morning to, to, to fellowship in his word because of love. Because of love expressed on G in Jesus Christ. Uh, the manifestation of love. It is, it's, it's, it's a beautiful um, thoughts and, and the scripture is, is, is the word inspired and Pastor Ken and Pastor Keith and each one of you we have that living word inside of us that we can give to the world that does not know this love, that they do not know this, as Cindy was saying, that may their eyes be open, the scales be removed and they can understand that love because of your walk, because of your life, because of the, the tapestry the simple message that you have inside of us. So I thank you so much, Lord, for your your work in the, in this body and through this church, through the uh, through your inspired word, Lord, that uh, speaks to our hearts, that changes us into your image more and more, daily by day, moment by moment, to give your love to others. It's all about others. It's your compassion that leads us to places and that brings us here this morning to know more of you, Father, to give this love to others. Thank you, Jesus, for doing a work in our lives, the great teacher, the great lover of our souls. Lord, we want to know you more this morning to give to others. We just thank you that uh, you finished the work, Lord. We, we come to hear from your word, word this morning. Thank you for each person that's here. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for their children. Thank you for the work that you're doing in each person, whether old or young, Lord, you're doing a work in all of our lives, an amazing work. Thank you for your hands are so gentle and tender, moving us and molding us and patient. Lord, we love you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God.
Good morning. Never get the applause first. All right. What an amazing God we serve, right? He's always up to something unexpected. This week, me and my wife got in an argument. I told her, I told her just like I always do. She was wrong. But then the argument ended and she said, I'm sorry. Need I say more? God can do anything. It's going to be a rough ride home. <laughs> but seriously, for, for a while, I was very scared to come up here. I'm still nervous when I come up here. But I was always afraid I was going to say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing. I'm going to, you know, but God speaks to me as I'm coming up here. So now I get excited that I'm about to hear from God whenever pastor asks me to come up here. It's, uh, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to stutter. I'm going to lose my place on my page. I'm going to (laughs) shake. But I'm excited because the word, word of God is about to come out of me. And, uh, I think that's amazing to me that I get to be the voice of God. And you guys have to sit there and just listen. <laughs> so up here I can say anything that God puts in my heart. It's something I, can, I can't come to you and say directly to your face without offending you. But God can put it in here. And he can speak right to your heart. And it doesn't matter that I said it. You know it came from God. And I'm not the one to get yelled at. <laughs> Except for on the ride home. <laughs> So this week was the Southeast Conference. God made a way for me to make it to three of the four, which I didn't think was going to happen. But uh, there was a couple of theme changes, a lot of good words. Um, I'm sure almost everyone who was there got a little something different out of it each day. Um, To me, there was a particular line that that hit me, partially because it was a seed thought that God had already placed in my my heart. Um, Seed thoughts are what we've learned on Wednesday nights. That's when... uh, when God puts something in on, some, you hear something, you see something, and God just says, hey, that's, that's for you. Don't let that one go. So um, basically, anytime I'm coming up here, that's one thing I noticed. We, I made the joke about Albert a couple weeks ago um, that he called me, but that was my seed thought. And I didn't know what it was at the time. We learned on Wednesday the week after that that that's what was happening. And it just became... Amazing to me to know that that happens to me in some way or another every time I'm about to come up here. And it's just, it's confirmation that God's, God's at work. And I think it's amazing that God will speak directly to me and he'll speak directly to you. So um, uh, going into this, uh, this weekend, or the whole week really, um, Pastor Schaller gave a message that just kind of went right along with it. And then the next day, another one that went right along with what I want to talk about. And it's just like, hey, Hello. I'm not, I'm not, uh, it wasn't just this little thing. It's a lot of things I want you to say, and I want it to come just like this. Um, Pastor Schaller went to Psalms 1, 1, verse, uh, Psalms 1, 1. Um, what he said was, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But in his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. So a Christian will look at this, or a non-Christian can look at this and think, so if I'm a Christian, everything's going to go my way. Everything I do is going to work, right? Well, in verse 2, it says, delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on it day and night, then everything you do will prosper. That's because you're doing what God wants you to do. You're not doing what you want to do. You're doing what God wants you to do. And God's plan for you, well, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, The plans I have for you, declares the Lord, are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So God wants you to prosper. His plan for you is a perfect, prosperous plan. And if you can follow it perfectly, 
everything you do is going to work. The difference is we, uh, we don't really know what prosperous is in our lives. So God plans for us to prosper. Why do we struggle? Well, uh, another Pastor Schaller message. <laughs> Romans 7, four, uh, uh, 14 to 18. Um, this, was, this was not actually the verses he used, but it's what came to my heart when he spoke. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. And what I do, what I do not want to do is what I, or sorry, excuse me. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, I no long, it is no longer myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is my sinful, in my sinful, my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. So we have a sinful nature. We have a new heart in God when we become Christians, but it keeps the old man wants to come out. Even though we're Christians, we don't always behave the way God wants us to. We're not a finished work. We have thoughts and ideas that don't follow God's plans for our lives. God gives us our prosperous plan and we say, I don't want to do it that way. I got this one. It doesn't usually work out all that well when we do that, does it? See, what we think being prosperous is and what God says is prosperous, very different things. Our sin, ta- our sin nature has a tough time letting God do what he wants to do. Anyone here Friday night know how we get rid of uh, our sinful nature? Got to die. We gone. <laughs> that was pastor's. <laughs> Isaiah fifty four seventeen says, No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment will, uh, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. When we are in God, nothing can stand against us. When I'm doing things my way, and I'm seeking, things, seeking what I want and not what God wants, I'm not delighting in the law of the Lord anymore. I'm delighting in the law of the world. Because of that, a weapon can't, is formed against me. It's me. I need to get out of the way. Look, guys, we're already on the winning team. <laughs> God already told us the ending of the movie. Didn't even say spoiler alert. The good guy wins. The best thing we can do is follow the script he gave us with no ad-libbing. Your ideas aren't that good. <laughs> when you try those, we get to do. Take two, take three, take four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I thank you for these words. I pray that they will touch the hearts of your people. Help us to follow your, your path and not our own. Just touch the words of the pastor as he comes up today. Help those to seek in. And just help us to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. what Bible college starts to do to people, huh? It's amazing. Hi, Mathilde. Hi, Marie. Jerry, oh. Yeah. I'm moving this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, before we get going, let me just, uh, it was, um, uh, we had an amazing time, amazing convention um, Thursday afternoon uh, after outreach, and um, outreach was special uh, on a Friday, so we might be switching our days. I mean, we had, we had three or four amazing uh, conversations with people that got deep, uh, people who um, lost their hope somewhere. 
They lost their hope somewhere. And you know what? This is what's amazing about the good news and the gospel is we've got an answer, right? Satan, remember what Pastor Scheller said? Satan will convict people and condemn people through questions. Did God really say this? Did God really do that? And, um, And that's what complicates the message. But there's that simplicity, right, in the message that uh, allows us to give a word in season to a person who has lost hope. And all of a sudden, they, I mean, you see the Holy Spirit and they start to come alive. So uh, I went out um, um, with Pastor Carl and then um, Chrissy tried to rein in on our parade. No, no, she came on our side of the street. Yeah, the right side, the right side of the street. No, <laughs> but... Um, but it was amazing. Um, we came across a, um, a lady there, and um, Chrissy was talking to her. And then I came around, and she goes, oh, I know, Pastor. You know, so I've been there before. I've been talking to her before. And she just lost her husband, though, not too long ago. Um, so um, she has to go out of town, and she wants, us to, she wants me to come back in November. So I'm going to go visit her. So after that, we went to the, a restaurant, and after eating... Uh, there, we, um, Pastor Carl came outside and was drawn to a, a girl that was sitting there with her two children waiting for her son to come from school, and he just said a word, and the tears started to come down. And, um, and, and that's when I walked out, and uh, Pastor Carl said, can you pray for her? And I started, so she's, she's good again, and I start praying, and again, she just starts crying, and she accepts Jesus Christ, and she got saved right there, right, right there in the middle. She didn't care what was going around or anything, and um, we, were, we were in the restaurant, and we were, um, we were singing happy birthday to Pastor Caro. And by the way, it wasn't his birthday. We just said, it is, and we're singing, and after we sang that, a girl at the other table said, but it is my birthday, you know? So we started singing again to her. That girl and her family sees us outside praying with this girl and this girl weeping. They come out of the restaurant and the sister was just diagnosed with cancer and she wanted prayer right then and there. And, and, God, and then now they're crying and this girl's crying and, 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 you know, and it's just amazing, you know? Uh, how God was just touching people. And you know what? Uh, I was talking to Pastor Kyle, and we had other things too, um, even that same day within hours. But um, we were talking about these divine appointments. And we should, we should walk in and expect them because the word of God is in you and the world needs hope and the world is dying. And, and, and the door is closing. The door is closing very quickly. It's an open door now, but that door is not going to stay open long. Just like the door of the ark. You know, uh, Noah preached all these years, and that door was starting to close. And once it closes, it's too late, unfortunately. And, and what a, you know, um, can you imagine people going to hell because um, we didn't want to share what God has given us freely. So, amazing. Um, and we could talk a little bit about the rap. We've got many other stories, but it was so encouraging to see this. And, and God divi- sets up these divine appointments. We weren't expecting any of that, and God put it into place. So, um, great time. Um, uh, amazing convention. Pastor Schaller was blessed. He was really, he loves coming down here. He loves being with us. It's really amazing. All right, so you guys ready? Why don't we, why don't we stand first and uh, shake it off a little bit because, um, yeah, shake it all, baby. Yeah, yeah. Remember, remember Jesse? Okay, come on. Let's go. Let's jump in, Jax. Let's go. Get that blood flowing a little bit, right? Get that blood flowing, right? <laughs> Praise God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. All right. 
So let me, um, let's pray and let's get into this. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your word and your love and your amazing grace and the word of God that is able to cause our mind to change the way we think. That's called repentance. Is when we change the way we think about something, change what I was doing, change the way I was thinking, and that word causes this inward change of my heart, and it starts to transform my mind, and next thing I know, I'm following Christ. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so bless these words and thoughts today in Jesus' name, amen. Um, we'll try to stay a little bit on uh, the topic, but um, uh, last couple of weeks I've been uh, speaking on, thank you, uh, we've, I've been speaking on doctrine, right? Remember doctrine, sound teaching, sound words. It's important that doctrine is preached because if doctrine is not preached, your theology goes in all directions and you're all over the place. And there is no soundness uh, in what you're even saying because it's not backed by doctrine. We don't change our doctrine. Doctrine is inspired, like uh, Steve was saying, is, is it the inspired word by God. So, um, in, um, so uh, Steve, um, you know, and with that doctrine, um, there comes an anointing. And, um, and, and a lot of denominations take this anointing and make this hyper-spiritual which is like only for the person speaking, you know, but the anointing is on the hearer more than even the speaker because if you're not hearing and faith comes by hearing, if you're not hearing, then how are we equipped to live in this world? Because it's an evil world. Do you know it's an evil world? Can you see it? Can you even sense it? and the atmosphere, you know, and how we can be walking in the spirit, and then all of a sudden, boy, where did that come from? You know, and it's, it's evil. It's the intention of, of disrupting um, your communication with God. And it, and it happens very quickly and often if we are not guarding our heart and if we're not in the body and hearing the word and being built up and edified in truth. So... Uh, let's start here, 1 John chapter 2, verses 16. And it says, for all that is in the world, how much? All of it. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. It's of the world. So this this lust of my flesh. And the, the word lust here doesn't need to be a sexual thing because that's how we pinpoint it. This is just desires, uh, deep, strong desires that we have as individuals is, is lust of a want, of, a, uh, of, of everything within my flesh. The desires of my flesh that I want is lust. It's the lust of the flesh. Any desires that I have with what I see and my perception is, is the lust of the eyes. And then the pride of life and the arrogancy. Um, and, and this is evil. This is evil. And how did Christ combat that? How did he combat the, this pride that was, by the way, found in Satan when Satan was cast down. And you can read that in uh, Isaiah 14. But, that, but Satan was cast down, and, and Jesus said, Christ said, I seen him fall as lightning. And that was because pride was first found in him. So Jesus comes and comes in humility, a totally different approach to God. Not through what we know, or even what you think you know, which, by the way, isn't much. We know nothing as we ought. We pretend we know, 
we pretend we're scholars of the Bible. It seems like the longer I'm in it, the least I know. And, um, and, and this humility starts to work. And in Philippians 2, 7 is where God, uh, Jesus Christ, he said that he um, made himself of no reputation. He, lo- he emptied himself. He emptied himself and became a man. Christ did that. Um, this word empty is, is kenosis. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 it's what is called in our, uh, in our uh, it's called theatric action. The- theo is God, anthropos is man. It's the God man. But he's not just man, and he's 100% God, he's 100% man. But he gave up uh, God and trusted on receiving from the Father. And that was humility. In humility, Christ served. In humility, Christ washed the disciples' feet. In humility, he went to the cross. That was set before him. That was the, the mark of the prize was the cross to Christ. And it was set before him and he set his eyes like a flint. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. It, it, was, it was single focus on the cross. What was the prize? It wasn't the cross. It wasn't the nail. It was you. We were the prize of the cross. We became that amazing pr- uh, prize. So all those things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father. It's all from the world. This is how the world will seduce you. This is how the world will infect you through these three areas. This is, what a tr- this is where we find ourselves in bondage and a slave to the things of the world. Verse 17, look at this. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Father abides forever. So the world is, is passing away. And here's a, this second part is, 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 a, is a, because we can see evil on the increase. It is everywhere. It is wicked and evil, and, it's, and it's, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, the restrainer keeping that back, this w- it would, all hell will break loose, <laughs> you know, literally, literally. But, um, but uh, the restrainer keeps things back for, for a time until Christ will come back for his church. Um, but... So evil's on the rise, but here it says um, the evil will, be, will pass away. So eventually it will when Christ comes back. There. But the world also, the world with its lust and, and, the, and the, the, the pride and this, um, this wickedness and this evil, the, eventually it will all pass away and those will then live forever those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Um, in verse 18, I'm just going to go over a couple of things and then we'll get into this. Um, verse 18 says, little children, and um, it is the last time. And this is, you know, this is John, you know, who wrote, wrote the gospel, who also wrote Revelations and wrote these three epistles the one that Jesus loved, that's how he identified himself. Isn't that an amazing thing? Hey, who are you? Well, I'm the one that Jesus loves. That, that's my identity. I mean, I, sometimes I maybe not feel it, but that's who I am, and that's who he convinced he was. What a, what a way to, I mean, that's what we should put on the back of our shirts. I'm the one that Jesus loves. Amazing, <laughs> you know, pretty incredible. But... Um, he says, uh, you know, in the last time you're going to hear that there are antichrist shall come. And even now there are many, right? There are many. You're hearing that the antichrist will come, but even now the spirit of antichrist is among us. This is back then. Just think of how it is now. 
With a, you, you know how many denominations and religions are out there preaching a type of heresy, a type of Christ? But it's anti-Christ. It's against Christ. You know, just because somebody says they're a Christian, talk to them a little bit. I mean, boy, they go into a, a, a way weird direction, you know? So we test it. So there's uh, anti-Christ will come. Anti, things that are against Christ. And then look at verse 20. And this is where I want to start here today. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. This word unction in the Greek means anointing. You have an anointing. You have an anointing, and you know all things. Now, again, I just got done saying I don't know nothing. You know, right? But, but listen, with the anointing, the Holy Spirit can reveal all things. That's the meaning of this. And, you know, as we have get around our deacon meetings, which we haven't had probably for five years, maybe we, maybe we need to go to Denny's and have a banana split. That was the last one. Banana split and the guys are just eating. We didn't say one word to each other, you know. That was that meeting. But, um, because, yeah, because deacon meetings can get way out of control. I don't know if you ever, I mean, th- there are more fights in deacon meetings than I see in, in the streets of Detroit, you know. Yeah, they're, they're rough. So, you have an unction, you have an anointing from the Holy One. And... Um, and 21, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you do know it. You do know the truth. And that no lie is of the truth. No lie is of the truth. You can be 99% right in your doctrine and 1% wrong, throw it all out. It's a lie. 99% true, 1% a lie. Lie. This is, this is something. This is a real, real good study. Truth is fully truth. Truth is the holiness of God. There is no lie. There's no part for a lie within it. Either our doctrine is true or we are just following an organization to make myself maybe feel better. And it's it's not doctrine. Doctrine eliminates truth. No room for error. No room for error. That's what I meant, error. So there's no error in, in doctrine, right? So 22, who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist. He denies the Father and he denies the Son. Denying of the Trinity, denying of what Christ did in finishing the work, denying that there is something still for you have to complete, that what Christ died on the cross was not enough. There's more. I've got to do things. It's a lie. It's part of the lie. That puts salvation upon you. And if it puts any part of salvation, that means you're adding to grace. And anything that you add to grace eliminates what Christ did on the cross. Because if you think it still depends upon you a little bit, then when are you going to get up on the cross and die? For what? For your sins. Either it's complete or it's not complete. Either it is finished or it is unfinished. And if it's unfinished, we remain in our sins. So pr- pretty tough there. So whoever denies a son in 23, save hey, not the father, but he that acknowledges the son and the father also. Okay, so starting in verse 24, he talks about Abiding in Christ. He uh, talks about abiding in Christ. Now look at this. You have heard from the beginning 
in that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, and you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise. The promise of continuing, the, the promise of abiding, that word is abiding in John 15, 5. Abide in the vine. We abide in the vine, and then we produce, and then fruit is produced. And the promise of that is eternal life. That word even uh, in your Bible should be in italics. And that means anything that you see in your Bible that's in italics is not in the original. So that word's not there. Okay? Is the promise, and that promise is eternal life. The promise of the truth. The promise of the truth is eternal life. This is why truth is so important. This is why it must be truth. This is why Jesus said in John 8, 32, the truth will set you free. Anything outside of that truth, you are in bondage. You're living in error. Now look at this, 26. These things I've written unto you concerning them that seduce you. There is a group that is seducing you. And these are this is these this antichrist, this false lie. It's bringing in maybe even the gospel message with legalism attached. Lie. It's a lie. How do lies generate? How do lies populate? How how does it get started? And, and by the way, there's lies set by people, especially with the internet today. You only need to say one thing and it's all through the internet. In, in, in chat messages, oh, have you ever thought you're a girl maybe? Lie. But now it's populated and that, that takes off. How does it spread all over the place so quickly? Because you're in a world system that knows nothing but to lie. And now as a country, we are embracing that garbage with no convictions. Nobody's saying up and saying no. I read, I read the thing today. It was in a, um, a girls volleyball match where a boy ended up power spiking and put a girl in the hospital. He's on the wrong court. Bring it. Let me spike one off your head. Incredible. Little stirred up. Amazing. It's a lie. When are we going to say no to the lie? When, why, why can't we? Because we're afraid of hurting somebody's feelings. We've got to say no. Got to stand up. Or you will be seduced. I'm concerning to them that are seduced. Seduction, planeho in the Greek, it means to tempt, to lure away, to lead astray, to lead away from the truth. If I can, take, if I can get you just to take one step with a lie in the opposite direction of Christ, I have seduced you. Or how about this? Why can't you just accept that? this? Why can't you just accept them? Because it's a lie. It's a lie. We can't live for the lie. So where does it get corrected in truth? Pastor Scheller said something amazing. I don't know if it was that the rapper in the message. He said, so you've got a river flowing down at the end of it. It's a waterfall. They're going over. You don't stand at the place of the waterfall and warn them. It's too late. You must warn them at the beginning of the river. Amazing thought. So, because the enemy is trying to seduce you in any way. 
through government, through the world system, through the schools, all everywhere. It's an evil world system. It's an evil world system. But you have the anointing. But you have the anointing. And that's what it says, 27. But the anointing which you have, you have the anointing which you receive from him because you abide in him. The anointing happens because we abide in the vine. We're abiding in Christ. And that you will not need anyone to teach you. This is not talking about having pastors teaching you. This is, this is saying you don't need evil men to teach you. You don't need to listen to the lie anymore. And you, and you can read that in Ephesians 4.11. So it's, it's all there about you will have teachers, pastor teachers. But the same is the anointing, teaching you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even if it has taught you, you shall abide in him. So hearing this truth, being taught by truth, being taught with an anointing, receiving what you hear with an anointing, with an anointing we receive truth. Let me, uh, let me show you this a little bit. Turn in your Bibles to Leviticus. You guys with me? Or are you guys out? You guys concentrating or are you guys somewhere else? Mm. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Okay, just seeing if you're listening. <laughs> hey, I'm there. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, let me, uh, let me tell you this story, then I'm going to go with a couple of verses, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, this, this is good. Okay, so in Leviticus chapter 8, the Lord comes and speaks to Moses, and he says, I want you to consecrate or set apart Aaron set apart Aaron set apart his sons and then anoint them I want you to anoint them um, so and, and remember that uh, Aaron and, and then and then his sons and you're and you're gonna anoint him you're gonna anoint the sons then you're gonna anoint his garments and you're going to anoint his priestly attire, and you're going to anoint everything about him, and, his, and, then you're, and then Moses would take him and wash him and cleanse him, and then they would put the priestly garments upon them because that was part of how God wanted it to be. All of this took place, and this was considered the anointing. And all, Listen, this is really good. All of this anointing took place before they went in. And, and same with us. Anointing should, should take place before you enter into the presence of God because they were anointing him to go into the Holy of Holies, into the place where he, they would meet with God and they would bring what? They would bring the blood. The sacrifice was... Okay, so, so they would bring the blood and the anointing before they would go in, they had to be... Uh, anointed. In verse 10, it says, and Moses took the anointing oil and anointed them. So then after his anointing, after his washing, after his cleansing, then he would go in and start anointing the tabernacle and, and, and all that was in it. All, everything that was in that tabernacle then would also be anointed with oil and he sanctified them. And this consecration and this sanctification, along with the anointing, ties in together. The anointing is a separation. That's sanctification. We are sanctified. We are set apart for a purpose, for a reason. It's our ser There's no serving without being sanctified. There's no serving without being set apart. There's no serving without the anointing. It has to be with the anointing. That's why this anointing is so important. 
And I think so many people r- try to rush into Christian uh, service without an anointing, without realizing that they are anointed. You are anointed w- with the Holy Spirit. So um, 11, they would sprinkle upon the altar seven times. They would anoint the altar. They would anoint all the vessels, right? They would anoint, anoint all of this stuff. And they were uh, the, the lavers, what they washed them in, to sanctify them, to set them apart. This is, why? Why setting up? Why is God saying, I need this set apart? Because we're in the world. We need to be set apart from the world. We can't, we're not of the world, folks. You are not, you're in the world, but you are not of it. You have been purchased. You have been bought with a price. The price is the blood of Christ. The, the blood he shed, he purchased your soul with. He took all your sins, and, and then he anointed you for the work of the ministry. Marriages are anointed. They're anointed. When you read your Bible, you've got an anointing. This is how it comes alive. This is how we can understand what we're reading now. This is how, like Brian says, wow, I, I got a seed thought. That's, it's an anointing. A seed thought allows me to get into and study more of what I'm receiving. And now I got an anointing on this topic or this subject. It's called categorical doctrine. We're categorizing this doctrine. Um, if, if, if you've never uh, picked up a Strong's Concordance, it's got the Hebrew and the Greek in it. But these words become very important because what we're reading is a translation from the original. So we like to go to the original as much as we can uh, because it's different wording than what we use today. So you need an anointing when you study. You need an anointing when you pray, right? Do we pray with an anointing? You do. You do. We have access to the Father where we can come boldly before the throne room of grace and receive mercy in, in time of need. That's an anointing. That's an anointing. So here, the high priest was the only one that could go in. He's the only one that could go into the Holy of Holies. Nobody else could enter in, just the priest. And he better be washed, cleansed, sanctified, set apart, and anointed. And bring the blood. All of it. Anything less than that it could be um, pride, <laughs> could be uh, my own human way of doing things. It could be something outside of God, and, and God is holy. And we are, we are entering his presence, anointed, being holy, being set apart for the work of the ministry. Everybody get that? Okay, so look at this. Let me see one more verse here, two more. Okay, okay so this is, okay, so now look what happens here. So they, he does the sin offering for himself. He does the offering for the people, right? He, he had to do an offering for himself because of his own sins. Then he would do another offering for the people. And then they would do the ram where they would lay the hands upon it. And this is where the story of the escape goat goes. One was sent into the wilderness never to return, and the other one... so. And then it, then it says this. Then there was, the, it was, uh, there, there was another offering. And then what happened? What God told Moses to do, and this is amazing. He said, okay, so take the blood and, and start with Aaron and anoint his right ear, anoint his right thumb, and anoint his right toe. Anoint and then do it to his sons. Anoint his ear, his right thumb, and his right toe. The anointing on the ear speaks of hearing. We need anointing when we hear the word of God. God wants to speak to his people. 
We need an anointing on what we hear. If not, we could be taking in things from the world. So this anointing is my filter that, listen, I am anointed to hear from God, and God, just like Brian was saying, is going to speak through the teacher to the people. We need to be anointed on what we hear. The right thumb speaks of my strength, and it, it realizes to me that in myself I am weak. I am very, very weak, but he is strong. His grace is sufficient. In my weakness, I receive strength from God in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And by grace, then by grace I get to walk. My grace becomes sufficient, not my strength. Not my strength. I'm, I'm sufficient in the grace of God. And then my right toe speaks of my walk my walk with God, and that needs to be anointed. Our walk needs to be anointed or we can easily drift off course. We can so go f so far to the right, so easily we can drift to the right and we can drift to the left. But uh, my walk needs to be anointed. In Ephesians 5, it talks about walking in the Spirit, walking in... Um, Walking not as a uh, uh, walking in love, uh, our walk should be walking in the spirit, walking in love. Uh, it even says, "Don't walk as fools walk." So there's a walk of a fool, by the way, and and that was I think that uh, Psalms one, you know, where they walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't put yourself in positions like that. Separ you are separated from that garbage. You do not need to go there. I don't need to make a stop off on my way to church, you know. It's like that. It's, oh, oh, but they need to hear the gospel. Let them come out. Let, let God give you a divine appointment with them if you have a heart for them. We don't, uh, we, we keep ourselves set apart from the world. In the world, but set apart from the world. So we need an anointing on our, our toll. Because you know what? The Bible says the natural man does not know the things of God, does not know the spirit of God. Natural. We cannot be living in our net. We need to be living as spiritual. You are a spiritual born again person. We live in the spirit realm. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14. So all these anointings are for a purpose because all of us from the top of my head and my ears all the way down um, needs to be presented uh, presented to God. We give ourselves fully and completely to him for the service of one another. Our service is to each other. We serve one another. We serve one another in love. Um, we, I seen that this weekend. Uh, Thursday night, I seen people serving, and thank God for all of you that uh, it, it was amazing what you guys did. Amazing. Uh, the, the, I'll put up our women against any women for food. Any, it, it was amazing. You guys are amazing. Amazing. Um, okay, so one last, one last verse here. Verse 30. Look at this. Leviticus 8. And Moses took the anointing oil and of the blood which is upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron, upon his garments, so this is again, and upon his sons, upon his sons' garments with him and sanctified Aaron and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. So now... Look at this. So, so he took the oil and he took the blood and then he sprinkled. And this became the anointing. This was the anointing. The, the blood stands for a person who has been born again and saved. You are saved by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ saved you. 
Jesus Christ upon the cross died and shed his blood that you can have eternal life. Your, the blood covers your sins. God now cannot even see your sins. They've been nailed to a cross that is covered in blood. It's the blood sacrifice. This is why in the Old Testament it has all these animal sacrifices. A lot of denominations don't believe Jesus Christ when he went to heaven brought in his physical blood. He brought the blood to the Father because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. He had to bring the blood. The Levitical priest had to bring the blood. Had to bring the blood. What would happen if he did not bring in the blood in the Holy of Holies? They say they tied a rope around his ankle. They just had to pull him out. He's dead. He's dead. And, and we are too. If, if we're not covered with the blood, we will die in our sins. So they had to have the blood. But then there was this oil that they made and incense and the aroma and everything else. But, but the oil speaks of the Holy Spirit. So now it's by the blood and the Holy Spirit. And, and you know what? We may be, we may be uh, washed in the blood, but, um, but we're not living by the Holy Spirit. We're living in our own nature, in our own self. It's called a carnal person. You're very carnal. You're saved, but you're living in the world. But you're, you're really dying. You're, you're not living for God. You need the blood and you need the Spirit. It's the blood and the spirit that had to be sprinkled upon them. And so it was sprinkled upon Aaron, who was the high priest. But you know what? It was also sprinkled upon his sons. And this is amazing because Jesus Christ now is our high priest. After the order of Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter 7. And we are called sons of God. We are the sons of Jesus Christ. We must be, we receive the anointing also. This is how the anointing is passed from the high priest, Jesus Christ, our high priest, who is also the sacrifice, and passed down to us as being sons. We are priests. You are a royal priesthood. The priests were, were, were brought up and taught to serve the people. And that's what we are. We are priests, but you have to be anointed too. You have to be anointed by the blood and you have to be anointed with that oil. And that's what covers us and this becomes our Christian walk in service for the people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the, the anointing upon your people. The anointing breaks the yoke, by the way. You listening? One more, one more thing. Look, look up here. The anointing breaks the yoke. Some of us are living under a very heavy yoke in our lives. It, 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 it's, it's so heavy upon our shoulders, we can't even live hardly. We can't even take a breath. And we're living under that burden. You know what? The anointing breaks the yoke. Give it to Christ. What you have, just give it to Christ. Give it to Him. Be yoked up with another be yoked up. Don't be yoked up with your burden. Be yoked up with Christ. Be yoked up with Christ today. Just pray and just, Lord Jesus, just thank you, Father. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the, the, um, the spirit, the oil, and the blood that covered me. I thank you for sanctification, this amazing work of sanctification in our life. And uh, Father, set your people free, deliver them, heal them. Maybe some of you need a healing touch today. Just let God touch you, just where you're at. Just touch you, touch you. We are not of the world. We are not of the world. The world wants to seduce you. The world wants to put you under a burden, wants to put pressure upon you. You are delivered from that. And, and you know what? We don't, li we don't listen to anybody that is saying things outside of doctrine. We must discern this. We must discern what is true. And everything else is a lie. It's a lie from the pit. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your people. Just minister and bless them. 
watch over them and protect them. Thank you for your uh, families, our families, Lord. Bless our families. Unite our families in unity.